We have climate crisis and it's not a new news. I have known about climate crisis since I was 16 years old, 15 years time. I have used this time on searching solutions, how to solve the climate crisis. When I was a teenager, I was looking at some really concrete examples where emissions come from. For example, cows. The cows are emitting uh, quite much methane. So what I was thinking with my friend, that maybe if we can catch the methane that they produce when they breathe, we could decrease the amount of emissions. Well, I'm not a natural scientist, so, and I'm not uh, a startup person, so I didn't make up a startup with this idea. Uh, but I was focusing something that uh, I'm more familiar to, people. So first I believed on politics. I didn't go to politics, but I was thinking that the politics will solve this problem. Well, I lost my hope. Um, I moved to then, then to uh, activism. Uh, then I was thinking that maybe something else could help. And I, at the point when I was 19, I decided that it should be law that is actually uh, solving all of these things. If we only have binding laws, we'll survive. Well, throughout the years I learned that none of these solutions alone will save us. I even did a PhD before I recognized this. So today uh, I'm more than convinced uh, than ever that we can still solve this, but there's not a single solution, but we need more solutions and I'm giving you the four critical uh, angles that we have to take into account to solve the crisis. The science. Yes, we need science. Uh, with climate crisis, it's not about opinions. It not, it's not about uh, beliefs that is it existing or uh, what is working. No, it is about facts. It is about natural science, but it is also about social sciences. It is about psychology, marketing, business. We need all different uh, sciences to explain uh, how to put the emissions down, what is effective, what is cost effective. The science is the key to recognize these things and without it, the decisions that we are making are not the right ones and we have no time to lose. And this one, we can't fail this one. If we fail, well, you know what happens. But the science itself is not enough. The scientists, they are not often the best storytellers. They give you the details. They gi give you the information, but they might not even give you the solutions or the products. They are not the decision makers. We need science, but alone, science is not enough to solve this crisis. What we need more than ever is cooperation. And what I mean by cooperation here is not the traditional kind of cooperation with the people who already knew each other, like the scientists and the politicians uh, and the corporations working together. But we need everyone on board. We need also students, media people. Uh, we need the youth. We need everyone on board. And what I'm suggesting is that we would need more platforms to cooperate to tackle specifically climate crisis. We would need, for example, something like the Green Silicon Valley, a place where the best brains are located and that they are having the constant dialogue on innovating and also making the ideas into practice. To make tailor-made solutions to different countries, to different cities, organizations and for individuals. This kind of cooperation would put all the best skills into one. These uh, solutions would be scientific, uh, based by scientific uh, evidence, and then executed. The, the problem is that we have cooperation a lot, 
but things remain business as usual. Where is the problem? Why isn't this cooperation enough? I think the problem is that we have a lot of solutions. We have a lot of information, but it's not touching the hearts of people. It's not helping the people to make the change. We get the information, we even get the solutions, so what? People, they just continue to live their lives. Climate change is for most of the people one thing among many, many other important topics. If we look at the media, for instance, we see more and more climate news there, but it's not every day in the headlines. Some of us are more interested about the celebrity, uh, like very, really well-known people and their lives, their private issues, than climate change. We know these things and still we don't act. So I claim that we still need something more. And at the moment, I really strongly be believe that we need cultural activities involved in this one. The reason is that it is the cultural artists, such as musicians, visual artists, who know how to make good stories, how to touch people, how to get them in the same place, how to get them to feel unity, how to get them to act. If we think about uh, the big, big uh, events in the history, is often related to also some cultural activities. For instance, when Martin Luther King was making his revolution together with a huge amount of people in human rights history, uh, they, they did marching in the streets, yes. They, they went to the courts, yes. But what they also always usually did was that they were singing together. It was the musicians who made the songs that everyone knew and they wanted to be on board. Later on, we had Live Aid, the concert that is, was like spread around all the world. Everyone wanted to be on board of that. Everyone wanted to join because of the music and because of a big cause. So what, what I'm saying is that we need something like that. We need climate aid, a global global big concerts that are bringing the attention and the donations would really support the climate action. It's not just about talking, but actually activating people. So we need science, we need cooperations, we need culture, but we also need law. Uh, I did my PhD on human rights law and uh, climate issues as well as other environmental issues. Because uh, early in my studies I learned that law is made by the politicians. And as I told you, uh, I had a bit of mistrust on the politicians, so I had a complex relationship within the law. If the law is made by the politicians and they don't want to do it in enough effective laws, how, how should I then uh, be and kind of have the trust that the laws are enough and adequate. So uh, I specialized in human rights law and I learned that law can be also interpreted and developed by the judges, for instance. So it's not only up to the politicians. And uh, after that I did my PhD that was based on the idea that the judges can take more progressive steps than the legislature. Well, uh, currently I work for the government and there are the big reforms going on on climate law and other regulations that are relevant. And I strongly, strongly think, as a, having a researcher background but now as a civil servant, that now is the momentum. Climate actions can't be only voluntary actions. We don't have time for that. But we need binding regulation. What we need is laws. We need laws and we have to reform our thinking so that every law is a climate law. There is at least 200 uh, laws 
at least in Finland, that are somehow relating to climate change already. We have to take into account in each of these laws climate perspective. And now is the time to reform the climate law itself. The consultations are open, so I invite all of you to participate. But the law is not if enough because it's not solving everything. Law is often really like a, uh, the highest norm. And climate change is touching everything. The law can't touch everything. So my thesis today here is to, to tell you that I think that one of these is not enough. Not a single solution enough uh, is not enough for the change that we need. But if we have all of these four, I'm sure that we can make the change that is necessary on the time limits that we have. And I'm wel uh, welcoming you all on board to take action in this picture where you feel that you belong most. Because it is most important that we use, uh, use all the strengths of the people to solve the crisis. This one, we can't fail. Thank you.